Hi everyone, my name's Dom, welcome to the channel. Today's video is a review of The Shadow of What Was Lost, book one in the Lacanius trilogy by James Islington. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts on this book, stick around. So The Shadow of What Was Lost is the first book in the Lacanius trilogy by James Islington. This is going to be my thoughts on the book. It's going to be a non-spoiler review. So um, to start it off, I'll give a little bit of a synopsis of the book, but it will be slightly more difficult than some other books, just because there are quite a lot of twists and turns to this story. And even early on in the book, some of the plot points will become quite spoilerish if I delve too deeply into them. So first things first, this is a world, I'm not even sure if a world itself has got a name, it's just individual countries, uh, one of the main ones that we spend a lot of our time in being Andorra. But this is a world that was previously ruled by the Augurs. These were people with great magic, with the ability to uh, manipulate time and to, to a certain degree, see the future. The Augurs were supported by the Gifted, who are lesser magic users, who would use uh, essence, which is kind of life magic, if you like, uh, to perform magical tasks in uh, in support of the augurs. So around 20 years before the start of the book, the powers of the augurs began to fail and the people, um, there was a rebellion basically, and the people overthrew the augurs and uh, killed them all. So the other magic users, the gifted, they survived this uprising by submitting themselves to four magical tenets, basically. These are tenets um, that basically limit the use of their magic. So things like they're not allowed to use magic to uh, to harm others. And it's it's not only a, a an actual set of rules, but it's, it's something that they are actually magically bound to. So if I try to use in this instance magic against someone else there will be kind of a block and they just physically won't be able to access magic. So fast forward 20 years to the start of the story and we we begin in a kind of a magical school for these gifted people and our main character is introduced. He's a chap called Davian and he is preparing for his uh, kind of his final trial with a capital T. If he fails the trial, he'll be turned into a shadow, which is basically somebody who is no longer able to access the essence and therefore no longer able to perform any kind of magic. The shadows are basically shunned by everybody. They're outcasts. They're sent away from the magical school and kind of the town that, um, or keep almost, that the magical school is set in and they're left to fend for themselves and uh, it's it's pretty it's a pretty miserable existence for them especially having access to the magic and then having it ripped away from them in the north you've got an ancient boundary um it's um it's not necessarily a physical wall but it's a boundary which is holding back the essentially monsters i guess and this boundary is starting to fail so at the start of the book, Davian is uh, essentially set a quest to go to the boundary or to find out what is happening with the boundary. But it's not kind of in as many words. He's kind of given a direction and he's given um, a magical artifact, which will kind of guide him on the way. It's, it's a situation where you will know where to go using this item because it will tell you when the time is right kind of thing. So it's all very vague, but he's he's kind of told that the boundary is failing and in his mind at least he's there going forward to to try and find something specific which ultimately will help him to either repair or to stop the disrepair of the boundary. So he sets off with his best friend Weir and they, they go north basically to start on this epic journey. Now, as far as the world goes, we find out quite a bit, actually, even from an early stage in the book. We learn about the magic, we learn a bit about the history, we learn about the different kinds of people and kind of the differences between those who do use magic and those who don't, and how these two groups of people interact and how they feel about each other. 
So we see that early on, but it's not um, it's not all exposition. It's not just kind of rammed down our throats. Um, it's handled in, in quite a nice way, actually. We just see it kind of firsthand. We have uh, sort of memories coming into place with, into play with this, and it all works quite well, I think. There are two types of magic. I won't go into one because it's kind of uh, a little bit too spoilery to do so, but the main type anyway is essence. So it's people who can use the essence, kind of drawing on life energy to perform magical tasks. And that's what Davian and Weir and their friends and uh, the fellow students at this magical school are learning how to use. Going on a quest opens up a lot of exploration of the world quite naturally. So you've got different countries and you see how the different countries each have their own different cultures and their perceptions and especially um, towards magic because it was such a big thing, this uh, kind of war, uh, civil war that broke out 20 years ago. Uh, different countries and different cultures still have varying kind of ideas of magic and magic users and you've got some who tolerate them and uh, you've got the magic schools there for instance and the people they kind of look down on magic users they distrust them and so forth but they kind of tolerate them and then you've got other countries where we go to and magic is essentially outlawed and you've got things like hunters who will track down uh, they can sense um, any use of magic and they'll they'll be on you in a flash and, and look to execute you or or whatever it is um, so you see again even early on in the book these different attitudes towards magic and the magic users themselves as well as different areas of world we also get to see different kind of mystical beings and monsters you've got uh, hidden cities with strange histories and and strange kind of present time I guess as well you see various uh, like magical artifacts and uh, the exploration of not only magic itself because our characters are quite young and they're still learning it and getting to grips with all of the aspects of it but you also see things like theories of time and space manipulation which all come into play into the wider storyline so there's lots to get your teeth into with this one both in terms of the physical world and the actual law as well and I think it's all really really well done it's a really interesting world for me and it's well handled for what I see of it in this first book in the series so with all that and especially the different uh, the way the different people all fit into the world the gifted the shadows the administrators the hunters it all points towards a world which has been quite well crafted there's obviously been a lot of thought put into this and I, I get the impression that uh, maybe there's um, kind of a lot of the kinks have been ironed out prior to publication. Um, this comes across in the actual story itself as well, but it seems very well done, very well thought out. And there's obviously been a lot of time and effort put into this. Um, and especially for a debut release, I think that's a real credit to the author. I think it's a really good job that's been done here. In terms of the characters, um, I, I think, again, a good job was done here. There's, uh, there's not really any characters who I dislike. We have uh, four main point of view characters. So you've got Davian and Weir. You've got Ashalia or Asha, who is a student. She's another one of the friends of the two main characters. And then you've got a mysterious man called Caden, who Davian comes across as uh, sort of during his quest. So Caden and Davian are linked, their futures are intertwined, but they don't know um, kind of how or why, they don't understand it. And a large part of this is because Caden has no memory of essentially anything beyond kind of a couple of weeks earlier. When Davian and Weir first meet Caden, Caden is a prisoner. He's been accused of a horrible crime that he himself doesn't know whether he's innocent or guilty of. So I think this gives quite a good dynamic for the character actually and his interactions with our other main characters because you don't know kind of a history of him. You only get little snippets as he's starting to remember little things and, and that's mostly things like he can remember how to do things but he doesn't know how, how or why he knows how to do this. So um, magic use, uh, martial art, things like that is... Uh, you know, he pick up a sword and he knows exactly how to hold it. So he's obviously had some training, 
but he doesn't know how or why or when or anything along those lines. But I think it gives a good dynamic because you and, by extension, the characters, they don't know whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, essentially. He could be out there to help them. He could be out there to hinder them. And none of them, including from what we see of him, Caden himself, none of them know which sort of side that is going to land on. Going away from that main side of the story, the other character, Asher, is an important character for the story, but she's specifically in the story called out as being important and we don't really find out why so this is something that uh, I assume at least is going to come to play in the second and the third book but she's noted as important and she is important to the storyline because of her relationship with the other main characters starting out at the same place they go their separate ways and there's always that kind of um, are they going to find out what's happening with each other? Are they going to meet up again and so forth? So she's got her own path and uh, and it's quite an interesting aspect to the story as well. But it's, it seems completely separated from the path that Davian and Weir are on. Although as the story goes on, you can start to see how those paths can become intertwined in the future as well. As for Davian and Weir themselves... They're best friends, so they've already got a good relationship at the start, and you can see that that works out because they, they work well as characters, but also they work well together in the task that they are set upon. So you can see where each of them has their strengths and maybe their weaknesses and how they kind of balance that out between the two of them. So it kind of works out really nicely. They have a good dynamic together, a good friendship and there's various things that happen that really um, kind of pull on this and give, give a little um, kind of interesting bit of development for both of the characters at any time that they're separated um, and the different things that they go through. So in terms of the story itself, I really enjoyed it. It's its, its own story, but you can see at the same time that there are various uh, nods and various influences of other uh, works as well. The main one that people tend to link this to is the Wheel of Time. So we've got a uh, sort of a, an initial cast of characters who are quite young and they're taken away from their kind of peaceful existence onto a quest. And you've got various things like mystical beings who are trying to track them down and stop them. You've got lost cities which are kind of reminiscent the scenes there a bit like what we see in the Wheel of Time with Shader Logoth. You've got uh, vessels which are magical items which some of them kind of give me a bit of um, uh, an impression of Tyrangriel. So you've got various little ideas which are similar to what you find in the Wheel of Time. I really enjoyed the the overall scope of it. I liked the the actual storyline, the plot itself. I thought there were loads of little twists and turns even early on in the book and it really helped to keep me on my toes as I was reading it. It kept me interested. You could tell not only from what I've said already about the world but from the story itself that this is something that's been well put together, it's well crafted. Well, there are several instances of foreshadowing within this book where you get the payoff later on and I'm sure there's other instances where we'll get a payoff in book two or book three as well. So I'm looking forward to that. I thought it was a really good debut initially, but it's a really good first book in the series, and I'm looking forward to book two and three. And if they can continue in kind of the same vein and build on what we've already got in book one, I can see this becoming another favourite series. Um, it's it's really really good it's well worth a read and it's right up there for me so a couple of the kind of negatives if if you like i didn't really have anything kind of overly bad to say about this book i as i said i really enjoyed it i'm not a big fan of the kind of magic school trope so i wasn't sure how this was going to go but we start off at a magic school as i said and you've got Davian and Weir and Asher as um, kind of trainees, if you like, gifted. But actually, we don't spend a lot of time there. And it's around about page 50 or so that Davian and, by extension, Weir 
went off, they left for school and went off on their quest. So we really don't spend the vast amount of time there. And within those first 50 pages, we're doing other things like meeting the characters, uh, seeing some of the immediate world and so forth. So it's not a case of just going really in depth and looking at the theory and how magic actually works. Probably my main gripe with this book was in some of the language that was used or the actual writing itself. There were several instances of the already overused uh, turn of phrase that somebody released a breath they didn't realise they were holding, which is, is kind of infamous, I guess, amongst book reviewers because people pick it out and it's one of those things that once you see it, you can't kind of not see it. So you automatically, even if it's only mentioned once in a book, it kind of sticks in your mind. But I think there were two or three or four instances in this book where someone released a breath that they didn't realise they were holding. Another one was around would-be attackers. I noticed a couple of times where it just sounded odd to me. Somebody was attacked and then the aggressor was referred to as their would-be attacker. Whereas for me, a would-be attacker is someone who's going to attack. And once they've attacked, they're just an attacker. So it kind of seemed odd to me and it, it was just a little bit clunky. It was only two or three times that this came up, but it just seemed a little bit odd to me. And... Overall, those are the only kind of couple of negatives that I really have. I thought the writing itself, especially for a debut, was, was good. It was really accessible. It kept flowing. It was a fast-paced book overall. I had no issues with the storyline, with the characters, with the magic and trying to comprehend it, the world. It was all a really good, well-put-together book for me. So overall, I gave it a four stars out of five. It's not perfect, but there were so few things that I can kind of nitpick with that it maybe uh, deserves a little bit of a higher score. I just felt that the, the follow-up books have a really good solid base to build on, and those are the books that I'm hoping will be four and a half or five stars. If you're someone who enjoys a kind of coming of age quest type story and you enjoy The Wheel of Time, you might like this because it shares some of those same kind of ideas and tropes and it, it tells its own story while still maintaining that kind of general theme that those um, tropes and those ideas bring. And there we have The Shadow of What Was Lost, book one in the Lacania series by James Islington. A really enjoyable read. I'm looking forward to books two and three. Let me know in the comments below if you've read this one or if you're looking to read it. Let me know what your thoughts or expectations are. If you liked this review, don't forget to like and subscribe. Take a look at some of the other reviews that I've done in the past and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.